Good day, Grade Eights, and welcome to our Worksheet Cloud Grade Eight Natural Sciences lesson. If you have a question during the lesson, please send an email with your question to grade eight at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Ernston, and I am the Worksheet Cloud Grade Eight Natural Sciences teacher. I'm sure you're ready for this lesson and you have some pen, pencils, and paper ready for us to work through the activities that we have planned for you to do today. So our first activity is I would like you to have a look at this picture. Now some of you may know what this is and you may have seen it before and some of you may never have seen it. But what I would like you to do is an I see, I think, I wonder activity. So for the I see part, all I need you to do is spend a minute or two looking at the picture using your powers of observation. Just look at what you can see and make a list and write everything down of what you can see in the picture. You may need to pause the video to do this part of the activity. That's not a problem. You can rejoin once you have got your I see list. Then you move on to I think. So when you look at this, what does it make you think about? And you can write down a few I think sentences. And then lastly, after you have looked at your observations of I see, and you've looked at your statements of I think, what does that make you wonder about? So what does it spark in your imagination? So in today's lesson, we're going to be revising friction and static electricity, and we'll be learning how to make an electroscope. So if we go through prior knowledge, friction or rubbing between certain materials such as plastic, perspex, glass, nylon, wool and silk transfers electrons between the atoms of the two materials being rubbed together. The other thing that is beneficial for knowing in this lesson is that electrons move from one material causing a positive charge on its surface and causing a negative charge on the surface of the other material. Remember that it's only the electrons that are transferred and the fact that protons and neutrons don't move. And I'll revise this concept in this lesson as well. The other concept is that objects or materials with the same charges or like charges repel each other and objects or materials with opposite or unlike charges attract each other. And then lastly, we will have a look at how to make an electroscope. So what is the definition for static electricity? It is the buildup of stationary electric charge. This charge can either be positive or negative. And we find this charge on the surface of an object. This buildup of charge is typically produced by friction and that can cause sparks or crackling or the attraction of dust or hair. I would like to remind you about the structure of an atom. Atoms are made up of three different kinds of subatomic particles and they are called electrons, protons, and neutrons. The other thing that is important to remember is the principle of conservation of charge. And that states that charges cannot be created or destroyed, but they can be transferred from one object to another. 
So here we have a schematic diagram representation of the structure of an atom. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus at the center of the atom. So here is our nucleus at the center of the atom and we find protons that have got a positive charge and we find neutrons that are neither positively or negatively charged. They do not carry a charge. They are neutral subatomic particles. And then around the outside, fast moving electrons can be found in a cloud that surrounds the nucleus. Electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles. They are much smaller than protons and neutrons. And electrons are fast moving and they form a cloud that surrounds the atomic nucleus. So when you rub different materials together, billions of atoms at the surface may lose some of their electrons and the material becomes positively charged because as a whole it will have more protons which are positive charges than electrons which are negative charges. The other material will gain electrons and therefore become negatively charged. So here we have a plastic rod or ruler and we have a cloth duster and we rub the cloth duster on the plastic ruler and we can see that some of the electrons left the cloth duster and were transferred to the plastic ruler. That meant the cloth duster has an overall positive charge is one, two, three, four positives and one negative and the ruler has an overall negative charge. It has one, two, three, four positive charges, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven negative charges. I would like you to try and describe what is happening in this picture. And I would like you to try and tell me why. Use the words attraction, neutral, and repulsion and give the picture a heading. So this diagram shows the laws of attraction and repulsion. With laws of repulsion, if we have two positive charges, they are the same as two like charges, they will repel each other. So here's a positive charge and a positive charge is like charges and they are moving away. Here we have a negative charge and a negative charge. They are like charges and they are showing the laws of repulsion. Here we have two neutrally charged balls and they are neither showing repulsion nor attraction. Here we have two surfaces, one is negatively charged and one is positively charged and they are showing forces of attraction. Opposite charges attract. So this diagram that we had a look at at the beginning of the lesson is known as an electroscope. It is an early scientific instrument used to identify the presence of a charged object or it can be used to identify the type of charge on a charged object. So an electroscope is a device that detects the existence of electric charges on objects. It is made up of a small compartment mostly made out of glass. So it could be a glass jar. It then has a metal rod 
or a metal stem that is inserted into the glass jar or container. It passes through an insulating cap and at the end of the glass rod we have folds of metal foil. So in the electroscopes that you find in school laboratories, these leaves are often made out of gold. But in our lesson today, I'm going to show you that we can use aluminium foil or any other type of metal. But it is hinged so that it is free to open up and it looks like the wings of a butterfly. The outer end of this metal rod or stem is connected to a metal cap or a disc or it could even be a sphere. So when the gold leaf and metal rod are both uncharged or neutral, the leaf hangs against the plate. So if we look at this first diagram here, this is a neutral electroscope and you can see the leaves are hanging vertically down. When a charged object is brought near the uncharged electroscope, the gold leaf is deflected. So in this case here, we have a negatively charged rod is brought close to the electroscope and you can see the leaves become deflected. So the electroscope approached with a negative rod which means that like charges in the foil repel each other. Here we have an object that has a positive charge and when approached, when the electroscope is approached with a positive rod, the like charges repel each other. So just to recap, when a charged object no matter whether it is positive or negative, is brought into contact with the outer sphere of the gold leaf electroscope, some of the charges get transferred to the foils via the metal rod. The foil, foils become charged up with like charges and we need to remember that like charges repel each other, that causes the foils to separate and open up. And that is how the foils indicate that some electric charges have been transferred to them. Even if a charged object is held near the sphere or the pan or the electroscope with no physical contact, the foils still open up. But if the object is taken away, from the metal disc of the electroscope, the pan, the foils drop down again. And we'll show this a little bit later on in the lesson. So just a reminder that with the electros electroscope, it is made up of an earthed metal box with glass windows. So here you can see the metal box along the outside and it's got glass windows that allow us to look in to see the metal rod hanging down and at the end it has fine strips of gold leaves that's attached to the metal rod. So if you look very carefully over there is a gold leaf. It has a disc or a ball at the top of this metal rod that hangs down and here we have an insulating disc. When the metal ball or disc at the top is touched with a charged object or a charged object is brought near to it, the gold foil strips spread apart as you can see in the diagram here. And that is just indicating that the object being brought closer to the electroscope has a charge. So this lesson we're going to go through and try and build our own electroscopes. So you'll need a glass jar with a lid. You will need some copper wire and the thicker the copper wire the better. But 
copper wire from an extension cord, if you take away the insulation material, should be enough. You need a plastic straw or plastic tubing. You need two small pieces of aluminium foil. You need a piece of wool cloth, a plastic ruler, and if possible, a glass rod. So here are the instructions for you to make a gold leaf electroscope. And if you can't remember them now, there's no need to write them down. If you just proceed to the worksheet that is associated with this lesson, you will get a list of the materials and method and instructions to build your model. But what you need to do is you need to twist one end of the copper wire into a spiral shape. That just increases its surface area. Then you need to make a hole in the jar lid and you need to push a small piece of plastic tubing or straw through the hole. Put the other end of the copper wire through the straw so that the spiral end is on the outside of the lid. Make a hook out of the pointed end of the copper wire. Then cut two rectangular shapes of aluminium foil and put each of the aluminium foils onto the hook. You might need to make a very small hole in the aluminium foil to allow it to hang on the copper hook. Carefully put the hook end of the copper wire into the glass jar and close the glass jar. You should now have made your electroscope. So steps eight and nine will just be checking if your electroscope works. So rub a plastic ruler with a woolen cloth for a minute or two and then bring the ruler close to the spiral end of the copper wire and see what happens. I have managed to find a video for you to watch that will help you make your electroscope. Well, I read about the gold leaf electroscope in my textbook, but I never saw one. But do you really need gold leaves to make an electroscope? Not really. You can make do with simple stuff. Take a 20 centimeter of thick bare copper wire, bend a circle on one end. After placing a thick and thin plastic straw in the copper wire, pull the other end of the wire into a hook. Build the hook through the central hole of a thick cardboard circle. Press fit the card circle in the plastic straw. Then cut two strips of paper, three centimeters long and one centimeter wide. Punch a hole on one end of each strip. Hang the two strips by the hook. Now place the card circle on the glass with the hook hanging inside the glass. Now the electroscope is ready. To try it out, rub a piece of PVC pipe with wool. Soon the pipe will acquire an electrical charge. Bring the charge pipe close to the wire circle. Do not touch it. The charge from the pipe will travel through the copper wire to the hanging paper strips. As both strips will acquire the same charge, they will repel. You can see them visibly separated. On removing the pipe, the strips return to their original position. You can see this glorious action in a close-up. Instead of paper strips, repeat this experiment with aluminium foil strips. Remember to, this, to do this experiment on a dry day. On a wet rainy day, this experiment will be doomed to failure as the charge will leak out in the moist air. So what did you observe when you brought the ruler close to the copper wire? The two pieces of aluminium foil moved apart. What happens if you move the ruler away from the copper wire? The aluminium foil pieces move back together again. Why do the pieces of aluminium foil move apart?
When you rubbed the plastic ruler with the wool cloth, the ruler became negatively charged. So here we have a ruler with negative charges on it. When the negatively charged ruler is brought close to the copper wire, the electrons on the wire are repelled downwards towards the aluminium foil. So here's our negatively charged ruler. Here is our copper wire. Here is a little bit of our insulation straw. Here's more of our copper wire and here is our two aluminium strips. So the negatively charged ruler is going to be brought close to the top of the copper wire. Because like charges repel each other, the electrons are going to move from the coiled copper wire down the copper wire into the aluminium leaves. And because like charges repel each other, the aluminium leaves separate and move apart. So the pieces of foil then have extra electrons on them, which means they are both negatively charged. Two objects which are negatively charged will repel each other. So the pieces of aluminium foil move away from each other. Explain what would happen if you brought a positively charged object close to your electroscope. When a positively charged object is brought close to the electroscope, so here we have a positively charged cloth or ruler or glass rod, the negative electrons that are attracted towards the positively charged object are going to move up through the wire. Remember, it's electrons that move. So this means that the pieces of aluminium have lost electrons. The electrons will leave the aluminium foil, move up the copper wire to the tip of the copper wire because opposite charges attract, the negative charges are attracted to the positively charged rod. So this means that the pieces of aluminium have lost some electrons so the aluminium now has an overall positive charge. So both pieces of aluminium are positively charged. Like charges repel each other and the pieces of aluminium will move apart. So are you able to explain what is happening in each of these diagrams A, B and C? A shows a neutral electroscope. B shows a negatively charged electroscope. And C shows a positively charged electroscope. You can discover more by going to an online simulation about balloons and a jersey if you follow the URL that you will find in the center of your screen. If you have any questions throughout this lesson, you can email your questions to gradates at worksheetcloud.com. Gradates, I hope you have lots of fun now going to make your gold leaf electroscopes and I would love to see them all. So thank you for watching Grade 8s. I hope you enjoy your day further and I would like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing this lesson to you today. Cheerio Grade 8s!